I just want you wherever you are just to shout in your spirit, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. It doesn't matter what your situation looks like. It doesn't matter what Good day, brethren. Thank you for the opportunity to share my testimony on the love of the Lord and what the Lord has done for me in his goodness and to remind you that the Lord still works miracles. I was retired on December 31, which is just a little over two months. And so now, of course, I'm home enjoying, trying to enjoy retirement. But after a week, I was in the kitchen one day and I felt very cold. And I'm like, hmm, the heat is on. Why am I cold? Why not just get a sweater and continue what I was doing? Then not long after, I got chills. I'm like, oh my, why am I so chilly? And my body didn't feel like it felt before. So I said, you know something, let me lay down. I laid down for a while, the shoes were still on. I'm like, you know, why do I feel like this? So later on, I went to check my temperature. My fever was, I had a fever of 102. I called my husband and I told him, he said, strange because he's having body aches, which he has never had before. It doesn't feel good. I'm like, okay, I called my daughter. She said, okay, maybe you have the COVID. You guys got to go get tested. So we found the place and we went to get tested. The following day, they said, we're positive. I said, okay, I was surprised. I was ter terrified. And I had mixed feelings, but I wasn't worried. So I said, Lord, I don't know why you allow it to happen. I don't understand, but all I'm asking you to do, do not let us get any scar tissue and blood clot. Because of course, you know, if you get a blood clot, you can die suddenly. If you get scar tissue in your lungs, you're gonna have that for the rest of your life. You'll have difficulty breathing. And I started praying and repeat, repeating my, my Bible promises. So I said, okay, hon, we cannot go out. We have to stay home and we have to quarantine ourselves. I'm like, he said, fine. but. Um, other than the fever, no other symptom, no shortness of breath, no cough, no body ache, no, no um, tastelessness, no nothing at all. So I went around doing what I had to do, cleaning up my house, just doing my chores because I cannot, I'm not supposed to go outside. And everything went well. And now I am checking my vital signs twice every two hours. Every two hours I check my respiration check my O2 saturation, that's the oxygenation in your in your system. And I'm checking my, my temperature. Nothing, everything is okay. It's going on, the same thing for my husband, nothing. The following week, everything is happening on a weekly basis now. The following week, the Thursday, I was doing my chores again. All of a sudden my respiration got fast. I'm like, why am I breathing so fast? So I took deep breaths, it went away. So remember that um, last week when I realized that I was, I had the COVID, I asked for no blood clots and no scar tissue. Okay, the shortness of breath started coming, but it was not, it was very mild. And I kept taking deep breaths and I kept doing what I have to do until it got worse. Now I'm having difficulty breathing. When I checked my respiration, it was about 30. I'm like, that is not good. I, the difficulty breathing got worse. So I, I called my doctor and then he had to call me back. So I waited for him to call me back. Now I am going into respiratory distress now. So when I check my O2 sat, it's 87 and normally supposed to be above 90. I said, Lord, I don't know what's happening, but um, now I got nervous. I was really confused now. And I started crying. I said, Lord, I don't want to die. And, but I'm not going to the hospital. So my girlfriend called me. She said she was doing her laundry downstairs. She's in Delaware. And all of a sudden, she felt the urge to come and call me. When she called, she says, Faith, you don't sound so good. I said, I don't feel good. She said, what happening? And I could hardly talk. Now I'm getting into deeper distress. I could not make a sentence. My sentence was like cutting, just like when someone who has an um, asthma attack, you can't complete a sentence. That's what was happening to me. So my daughter called, I didn't call her. She called me same time because my girlfriend called her. My, when she called, 
As soon as she heard me, she says, mommy, you have to go to the emergency room right now. I said, no, I'm not going. And in the middle of that confusion, the doctor called. When he heard me, he said, Miss Spirit, you have to go to get a chest X-ray right now. So I said to my husband, let's get dressed and go to the emergency room. We went. While, on, but on the strange thing, strange thing happened on the way to the emergency room, I felt a little better. When I got there in triage, my O2 sat went up to 93. My respirations went down. And of course, I didn't have a fever. And I felt shortness of breath was, it decreased. It was a little, little better. I could breathe a little better. So I'm like, thank you, Lord. Okay. And my husband was sent home. He also was triaged because he said he was having a little shortness of breath. So they checked his and they did, a, they did an X-ray, chest X-ray on him. His was very mild. He was sent home. Now they told me that I'm, I'm sorry, after doing my blood test, after doing the chest X-ray, they, after the results, they came back and told me that, yes, I'm positive for the COVID. Yes, um, I have the pneumonia, the COVID pneumonia. My lungs, it's damaged. It's, and plus I have the flu. Because the Lord allowed me to have the fever that I could go get tested. And then he allowed me to have the shortness of breath, difficulty breathing so that I could go for treatment. So they said, you have to be admitted. And of course, I have to be the um, isolated. I'm like, sure. So they started the treatment for, but it so happened that the pneumonia was viral from the COVID and not from, and not bacterial because I didn't have to get any antibiotic. They started the treatment in the ER. Um, they give me the Tamiflu and they gave me the medication, the steroid for the pneumonia. Okay, about midnight I got, and, and actually I felt a little better. About midnight, I got a bed upstairs. By now, my husband went home. He came and said goodbye to me. He went home. He got to go home. I had to stay to be treated. So I got a room upstairs about midnight. And I went up and they put me on oxygen. I had a little bit of shortness of breath. And then I started a little bit of coughing. Remember, I had no cough before. A little bit of coughing, um, non-productive, which is dry cough. I had a little bit of dry cough, but nothing too much, just, just a little bit to remind me that something is happening in my lungs. Okay, I didn't sleep properly because I was very concerned. I spent most of the night praying and you know, just tell the Lord what I needed to or what he needed to do for me. Just remind him of what he said he would do for me. And in the morning, the doctor came in. She said, Miss Spirit, your, your lungs is damaged. You know that you have the, um, the flu and we are going to um, take care of you. She listened to my lungs. When she listened, she said on the right side of your lungs, the bottom, the air is, um, it's the, the air is going in, but um, towards the bottom, I can, it's diminishing. Then she, she explained to me what the treatment is gonna be. I said, fine. Not towards midday, that was Friday, they came to me for me. I said, Lord, I ask you for no clot, and I believe you're going to do that. They took me to CAT scan, brought me back. Later on, the doctor returned. She said to me, I, you have no clot. I said, how much was my D-dimer? She said, your D-dimer is over 2,000. That's and she right. said, okay, what we've decided to do to give you the remdesivir for the virus which is that's the IV drug that was approved by the FDA last November. I asked her the side effect. She told me, I said, how long will I have to be on it? She said, depend on how you improve five days or 10 days. And that is once a day treatment. Okay. I said, fine. So I am just thanking the Lord for no clot. And I am praying, having my worship, getting up, walking to the bathroom. And by the way, I never felt like I felt earlier. I wasn't weak or anything. I walked to the bathroom. I sat in the chair and, you know, but somehow I know the Lord promised to help me. So I know he's going to help me. So I wasn't worried at all. The Sabbath morning, she came in to check on me. When she came in, she listened to my lungs again. And she said, Miss Spirit, you're... The, the, I, the, air, the air is moving around very much, said, 
the crackles are decreasing. I don't understand what's going on. Your D-dimer is high. You don't have a clot. You don't have, um, the pneumonia is since resolving. You're only on two liters of oxygen because usually with the way the lungs is damaged and you're supposed to be on more oxygen but you only require two liters of oxygen. I'm like, okay. And I said to her, you know something? That's the goodness of the Lord. I said, there are people all over praying for me. And that's how the Lord take care of people. There is people who are faithful to him, who are obedient to him. And she said to me, you know, I know there is a higher power. And some people do believe in a higher power. And if you believe in the higher power and it's helping you, it's good to help you. Well, by all means, go ahead and believe in it. So I smiled. And when she left the room, I went in a praise and worship mode. I started thanking the Lord. I started singing. I started, it's as if I wasn't sick. And so everything continued the way it is now. Uh, the coughing stopped. I didn't have, the shortness of breath was there, but very little. And I walked to the bathroom. I sit in the chair. I sat up in the bed. And my body didn't feel like it felt the day before I went to the, to the hospital. So I just... I just say to myself, the Lord has been extremely good. He has performed a miracle in me because he has, again, he has allowed me to have the fever that I could go get tested. Then I never had any more fever. Then he allowed me to get um, short of breath, went in respiratory distress, that I go get treatment. And now I don't feel like I felt before and everything is getting better. And I continued praising God. And as a matter of fact, I started praying for my from my roommate, I forgot about me. No, not that I wasn't praying for her before, but I stopped thinking about me, started praying for my roommate and everybody who has COVID there. And I felt so much better. I felt so good. I said, thank you, Lord. That's all I kept thanking the Lord. And the, the, within the fourth day after getting the treatment, she says, Miss Spirit, your blood work is so good. Everything is coming down. Everything is um." going back to normal. I don't think yeah, you have to stay for very much longer. I'm like, really? She said, okay, just you have one day worth of treatment to get. And probably you will be able to be discharged after the treatment. I'm like, to God be the glory. So now with the nurses, everybody came in, saying how I am behaving. They couldn't understand how I have COVID and most of the COVID patients, they are seeing they are very sick. They have to be on high flow oxygen or the ventilator. But me, I don't act as if I have COVID and especially uh, with my lungs being damaged. So I, I said to them, that's the power of the Lord. And I said, God is great. And most of them responded to me. Some of them don't, some of them do. But I just keep saying the praises of the Lord because I know what he has brought me through. So it came for the day before I was discharged. PT came up to say, oh, I'm doing breathing, I'm doing breathing wise. And he said, you don't need more than, um, because I'm only, I was only on two liters of oxygen. He said, maybe we could cut them down to one liter. We'll see how you'd want it. And he did. So the day before I was discharged, I took just one liter of oxygen for the entire day. The morning before of discharge, he came into me. And he said, you did very well. And because they're checking my vital signs. So he said, you did very well. So maybe I'm going to take it off today because the doctors say you may be going home today. So he took it off. So I said, what about when I go home? What will I do if I need oxygen? He said, no, we, no. At first he said, I'm sorry. You're not going to go on. We're not going to send you home with any oxygen because you don't need it. So I said, what if I become short of breath? What do I do? He said, you won't. We'll teach, we'll teach you what exercise you're to do and that will be okay. So right then and there, he taught me some breathing exercise and you know other exercise and I was fine. So for the entire day, I had no oxygen on. I was doing fine walking around the room, doing talking, calling my husband, calling my children, doing everything, letting them know I'm coming home and I feel fine. And I'm just praising the Lord. And brethren, I came home. I came home. I was going back and forth. I was a little bit weak. Even though I wasn't weak in the hospital, I was a little bit weak. And I realized it's different. I'm walking upstairs now. So for the first week home, I felt a little weak, but no, a little bit of short of breath because I'm still checking my O2 sat and I'm still, and I'm still doing my incentive spirometer just to open up my lungs. 
And day by day, I got better. I got to the point where I didn't even have to use the incentive parameter anymore. I'm just thanking the Lord, walking around the house, still not going out because I am still afraid of going, not afraid, but I'm a little cautious in going out. So I'm like, I stay, I stayed inside until the next week. I said, hon, I'm tired of staying in, take me out. So we went out and I felt better coming back inside. I felt a little bit of weakness. So I said, you have to walk around a little more. And I kept doing that and brethren up until this day, I don't have to take any medication, no fever, no shortness of breath, no cough, no COVID symptom. And I feel better. So I'm just letting you know, Virgin Lord has worked a miracle on me. And I just have to thank him. I just have to praise him. And just know that, brethren, he can do the same for you. Whatever problem you have, it doesn't have to be COVID. But just remember, if you're faithful and obedient, the Lord will grant you the desires of your heart. And just on a cautious note, COVID is very real, brethren. It is very rare. And everyone might not have the same response that I had. So be careful. Wear your mask at all times. Make sure it's tightly fitted around your face. This way, no, because if the air you're breathing can come out, mean it will go be able to go in. And don't forget, you can't see the COVID molecules are very small. So it, it only goes in the air. So be very careful and just continue praising the Lord. Stay away from crowds, like they say, no crowds. And especially because when you're in a crowd, people are talking, you don't know who has it from who doesn't. And especially if you have to eat, you have to remove your mask. So please be cautious and continue praying. And brethren, again, the Lord has worked a miracle in me. But thank you for listening to my to my testimony. And I hope this will help somebody. For the